Welcome, welcome, welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss CoinWay. And there's a few warm up problems to get us started. The first one says that there's nine coins, and all the coins look identical, except one is slightly heavier than all of the others. And our job is to find that heavy coin with using two weighings on a pan bell. So give that a try, and if you solve that one right away, take a look at the next one. I want you to try these problems on your own before we discuss the solutions. This time there's just eight coins. Again, they're all identical, except that the counterfeit coin is either slightly heavier or slightly lighter. So the last time it could just be heavy, but now it could be either one. Again, we're gonna to try to find that counterfeit using a pan balance. This time we have three wings instead of two. And you don't have to specifically identify the counterfeit as being too heavy or too light. Just try to find it. Just say that's the bad coin and identify it in that way. It could be heavy or could be light. So pause the video now, give these problems a try, and then we'll build some theory towards their solutions. Okay, so we're going to discuss what we call adaptive solutions first to attack these types of problems. Later on, we'll discuss non-adaptive solutions. So adaptive is just like it sounds. You get to adapt throughout your solution. So for example, if the scale tips to the left on the first weighing, you can decide to put different coins on for the second weighing, and so on. So every mathematician tries to find the best notation out there to you know, deal with different problems. So here's kind of the best that I could find to try to deal with coin weighing problems in an adaptive way. So the following notation is going to be used in this video today. So let's keep in mind all of these notations. So if we just draw a circle, that's going to represent a coin that we don't know anything about. If we write G down on our page or our diagram, that's going to represent a coin that is known to have the correct weight, so G for good. H is a coin that might be too heavy, but it's not too light. L is the opposite of that, so capital L means it might be too light, but we've discovered that it's not too heavy. And then if we're drawing arrows like this, we'll represent different cases for how the scale responds. It either tips to the left tips to the right, or balances in that order. So we'll start discussing part A of the warm-up problem. So that was where we had nine coins, and one of those nine coins could be too heavy. So let's write that down in the notation above. Okay, so there's our notation being used. We're supposed to find the counterfeit among all of these H's. There are nine coins, which would possibly be too heavy. Eight of them are good, but we don't know which eight. So it might be that these are too heavy. One of them we know for sure is too heavy. So when trying to think of how to place these coins on the scale and how to adapt from that, we have our two weighings. One very logical thing that works really nicely if you tried splitting up the coins evenly among three groups being the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and off the scale, that seems to work really, really well. Okay, so now that we've split them up evenly, there's three things that can happen. Our scale could tip to the left, so I'll draw an arrow with an L on top representing tipping to the left. Our scale could balance, I'll put that one in the middle or it could tip to the right-hand side. So if it tips to the left, then these three coins are in question. So those three coins will come over here, and we can try to deal with them there. If it balances, then the coins that were left off of the scale are in question, so we'll deal with them there. If it tips to the right, then the coins that are on the right-hand side are in question, so we'll deal with those coins there. 
So what we'd want to do with each of these cases is really an identical situation. We want to deal with finding a counterfeit among three coins that could be too heavy. If again you divide up evenly among those groups, it is very helpful. Because at this point, however the scale responds, the left, it means the left-hand coin is heavy, the right means the right, and balance means the one that's off the scale is too heavy. So that solves our problem. We could use a little bit better notation. Can also get rid of our red writing here. That's just to describe where these coins are coming from. And the more convenient notation that we could use is just notice that in each of these cases, we're doing the same thing. So how about we combine them all into one case? And when we do that, we can just combine the arrows all into one as well. They're symmetric in all three of the cases. So we'll allow ourselves to write an arrow with an L, an R, and a B. In all three of those cases, tipping left or tipping right or balancing, we do the same thing. And this displays a mathematical way where we can solve this uh, searching problem. Let's move on to our next problem. Okay, part B to the warm-up problem said, now our counterfeit might be too heavy or might be too light. Let's put this into the notation that we've used above. So this time we have eight circles that we haven't discovered anything about. We don't know too heavy, too light. They're unknowns, unknown coins. But again, we're gonna take those coins and divide them up evenly on our scale. Okay, now when we did this this time around, you can't quite make it a perfect you know, three, three, and three group but you do the best you can. And what you have to make sure is that the same amount of coins are on either side of the scale, because it's a pan balance and the counterfeit is only slightly different in weight. So you have to have the same number of coins on either side of the scale to balance things out. And it doesn't matter how many are, are off the scale in relation to that, but we'll try to keep the group sizes as even as possible with that restriction. Okay, now there's Three possibilities, it can balance, it can tip to the left or tip to the right. Now let's think about what happens if it balances first. So over here, we'll think about if it balances, then everything that was left off of the scale could be problematic. But everything that's on the scale, all of the coins that are sitting here, they are all known to be good if it balances. So we just have these ones to deal with. So in that case, what we could do is take one of our good coins and compare it against the counterfeit. And the other coin, we'll just leave that off of the scale. So if the scale happens to balance, then we'll know that this one is the problematic one. So in that case, uh, things are rather straightforward. If it tips to the left or tips to the right, what would happen is there's a problem on the scale, but we discover some information about the coins on the scale. Let's say, for example, this side comes down, then you would know that the coins over here are all too heavy, possibly. And the coins over here are all too light, possibly. Now, if it tipped the other way, if this side came down, again, it would be symmetric you would have three possible heavy coins and three possible light coins. They might be different coins, like you know the lights are now over here and vice versa, but mathematically this is symmetric. I don't think that we need to complicate our diagram more by writing out more cases. We can again combine our diagram to say that you know if we tip to the left or we tip to the right, either way we have to deal with the same thing. And again, what we're going to do is divide up our coins evenly or as even as possible. So there's three H's, they'll get divided up evenly, and there's three L's, they'll get divided up 
evenly. Let's think about all of the scenarios that can occur. If the scale here tips to the left, then what would happen? Well, it could be this H here bringing it down. The L here is good. This H is good. This L could have brought the right-hand side up. So it's between an H and an L. So what we could do with that is take an H, compare it against one of the many good coins that we have at this point in our process, and leave the light coin off of the scale. If it tips to the right, something very similar happens. So it could be this coin bringing it down, or that coin bringing the left-hand side up. So it breaks down to the same problem. If it tips to the right, we have a symmetric situation. Or finally, if it balances, it's either the heavy or light one that was left off of the scale, and that also leads us to the same scenario. So we can describe all the cases in our diagram using the notation that we set up earlier. Let's look at one more problem before we move on. So we're going to test out our method with 12 coins. So we'll keep trying to use all the notation that we discovered above and see how good it is at attacking this particular problem. So this time we'll write down our notation just like before. So there's our 12 circles that we're trying to find the counterfeit among. We're going to start by evenly distributing them in our three groups on our first weighing. And we'll start by thinking about, well, what if these coins balance? So if we have a scenario where that scale balances out, it's one of the four coins that we left off of the scale. So we'll make another weighing over here on the left-hand side of our page where we distribute our coins as evenly as possible in our groups. And here we end up with a scenario where we going to have to use a good coin to make sure there's the same amount of coins on either side of the scale. If it tips to the left or it tips to the right, we have symmetric scenarios. Each of those scenarios give us four heavies and four lights. So we'll divide those up as evenly as possible among the three groups. And again, we have to balance things out by putting two good coins on the right-hand side to make sure that we're weighing four versus four. Okay, so that takes care of the first weighing and the second weighing. Now we'll think about the third weighing. Okay, so let's start on the left-hand side. Let's say our left-hand scale here balanced out. So I'll write an arrow and a B over top. It means that the coin that we left off of the scale, right here, is the counterfeit. In this problem, we're going to discover if our counterfeit is too heavy or too light. So I'm going to do one more weighing in this case. So I'm going to take that counterfeit and compare it against one of the good coins. Okay, so another thing that could happen is if our scale here tips to the left. If it does tip to the left, then the coins right here could be too heavy, and that coin right there could be too light. So we have two heavies and one light. So what we'll do with that is take our scale, compare the two heavies, see which side comes down, and if neither side comes down, it's the light one that we left off the scale. And the final thing that could occur, what if our scale tips to the right hand side. If it tips to the right hand side, then this coin here could be too heavy, or these coins over here could be too light. So this time, two lights and one heavy. So very similar to what we just did, we're going to take our scale and compare the lights, see which side comes up. If neither side comes up, it's the heavy one that we left off the scale. Okay, so that's every scenario. For the left-hand channel, let's check out the right-hand channel. So over here, what if this scale balances out? 
then every coin that's on the scale will be a good coin. So in the scenario of balancing, every coin that's on the scale is good, and we just have a heavy versus a light to deal with. So we'll take a heavy, compare it against a good coin, and leave the light coin off the scale. What if this scale tips to the left? These coins right here could be too heavy, or this coin here could be too light. That's two heavies and one light. And we've already analyzed that right here, two heavies and one light. That's when we're tipping to the left. And the final scenario is when this weighing could tip to the right-hand side. If it tips to the right, then this coin here could be bringing the right-hand side down, or these coins here could be bringing the left-hand side up. We've already analyzed two lights and one heavy, and that completes all of the possibilities. I encourage you to try to put this game into perspective. There's an app that's posted on our course webpage. If you check out that app, you can kind of play with actual coins and see if what we're writing down here makes sense, see if the diagram can be put to actual use. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you on the next one.